Chronicles chapter 11. I want to go into the word this morning. And I want to read from verse 1 to verse 5. And as you I just put it on the screen, I want you to just say a few words. Because my short absence, I had to go home because I lost a friend. Just 54 years of age. I knew him for the past 36 years. We grew up as teenagers working together. We shared everything that we had. He was like a, a big brother to me. And I remember, I remember, you don't have much friends like that. To 36 years, I remember leaving Trinidad 20 years ago. My friend approached me and says, David, I know you're going away. You're going on God's, God's mission field. God is sending you. I know you will come in and out to see your mom, but I want you to know this morning, you could count on me to look after to see that your mom and your family is okay. For the past 20 years, that brother used to visit my mother, cook for her. Two years ago, his leg was amputated. I was... I went to Trinidad, he, they cut off his leg. He had sugar diabetes and he got a, a nail, shook him on his foot and he didn't feel it. And he got gangrene and it spread so much and when the thought there was just going to cut off just by his ankle when they do the surgery. When he got up he didn't realize that his leg was amputated. He was feeling for his leg and he couldn't feel couldn't find the leg that was there. You could imagine the breakdown. But even though our condition will get healed, I thank God for him because even Mother's Day went by with one leg. Still got up and cook and carry food for my mother. I want you to know, I bury my friend and looking at this casket and seeing a young man today and Minister Rennie shared about renaissance for you know, the, the devil says, live fast, die young, and make a good-looking corpse. And the trend is today, but we want to encourage you today. Honor your father and mother, whereby you will have long life upon the face of the earth. We live in a time that people's are, lives are being taken away. And many people are, living, are going to spend a Christless eternity. You have people who love Christ. They say they love God. But they're turning their back on him. They're doing the things of the world. I want you to know you don't know what time, when is your time, when the appointment is going to come. And that's why we got to be prepared. We got to be ready. That when our time comes, if we leave this earth, we will spend eternity without God. Are you hearing me this morning? So I want to encourage you this morning. It was a difficult time for me. But I know God had a plan. And so I was able, even during that time, that short space of time in the funeral, after the funeral, to minister to a lot of people, a lot of individuals that I spoke to. I spoke to couples that were going through difficult times. People need answers. People need help. And the church, those who love Christ and believe in Him, you have the answer for the world. Amen. Are you hearing me? Don't hide your light. Let your light shine before men this morning that you can see the good works and glorify God which is out in heaven. Are you me this morning? First Chronicles chapter 11 in the Old Testament. I'm going to read from the, you're going to put it up on the screen. I'm going to read from this new international version. David become king over Israel. All Israel came together to David at Hebron and said, We are your flesh and blood. In the past, even while Saul was king, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaign. And the Lord your God said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, he made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And he anointed David king over Israel, and the Lord had promised through Samuel, David, amen, David conquered Jerusalem. We see in verse 4, David and all the Israel matched to Jerusalem, that is Jebus. The Jebusite who lived there 
said to David, you will not get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. And David had said, whoever lead the attack on the Jebusite side will become commander in chief. And Joab's son of Zeruiah went up first, and so he received the command. David then took up residence in the fortress, and so it was called the city of David. He built up the city around it from the terrace to the surrounding wall, while Joab restored the rest of the city. Verse 9, and David became more and more powerful because the Lord Almighty was with him. We could read this version, so David walks greater and greater for the Lord of hosts was with him. I just want to read just a couple of verses from other passages of scripture. I don't have the term, but if you're taking notes, just to build a foundation for what I want to talk to you about. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 17 says, And I have promised to bring you out of your misery in Egypt, into the land of the Canaanite, Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, a land flowing with milk and honey. Many, many years ago, there was a prophetic proclamation that was given. And God has spoken to his people and says, they were in bondage for over 400 years under the taskmasters of Egypt. And they were serving the pharaohs and they were making the bricks for the pharaohs. And God heard the agony and the cry of his people. And so for 400 years, the people were crying out for God to deliver them from the Egyptian bondage. If I were to inject a thought there this morning, there are many people who are crying out. They're crying out for deliverance. Some of you are trying so drastically to get a breakthrough in your life, to get delivered from the agony and the stress that you're going through, the things that bombard your mind, the relationship that has haunted you, decisions that you have made that is still haunting you today. People are crying out. In the world that we're living in, in the world of frustration, our society is crying out. And because the inner cry of the man is cry, crying out, we are seeing that people are manifesting this cry by trying to drown out the inner cry by things they're doing to try to sustain or keep that inner voice down. But nevertheless, there's a cry in the heart of mankind. People are falling apart. People's worlds have been wrecked. Homes have been destroyed. Drugs are plaguing homes. Our young people are getting themselves caught up in drugs. People are, are more alcohol is selling in this world today. People are becoming lovers of pleasure, more lovers of God. And there's a cry. There's a, some people, amen, they use these things to try to, you know, to get a grip on their life because they are falling apart. But I want you to know this morning, all of that can only be solved by crying out to Jesus. Are you hearing me this morning? I want to acknowledge that. So for 400 years, the people were crying out because they were in bondage. And we understand that God raised up a deliverer in the person of Moses. And God has given a word, amen, from Abraham time. And now it reached to Moses and, and God's word is that I mean, he's going to take them into land that is flowing with milk and honey. I want to inject a thought here today so I want you to understand. I want you, how many believe that the promises of God is yes and amen to them that believe? How many believe that God's word is true, that God is not a man that he shall lie, but whatever he said will come to pass? God's word is true, God is not a liar, God cannot lie. And so therefore, I want to inject this so that you can adhere to it. Amen. God will hold his promise this morning. And God has spoken to us and he says, amen, he has given us promises in his word. There's over 3,000 promises in the word. And God says, amen, those promises is to everyone that believe. Amen. Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20 tells us, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. When I read Deuteronomy chapter 7 to enhance the, the passage of scripture that we have read this morning is for a text. From the international, New International Version, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1 tells us, Drive 
even of the nations. Because I want you to know this morning, when God give you a promise this morning, God give his people a promise that he is taking them out of bondage and he's going to take them into a land that is flowing with milk and honey. How many want to enjoy the milk and honey that God has promised us this morning? How many want to enjoy the blessings that God has declared for his people this morning? If you are here this morning and you want to enjoy the blessings of God, somebody say hallelujah. But God says he's going to take them out from the land of Egypt and take them to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. But God, amen, didn't include or he didn't tell them at that moment that the land that he has taken it was occupied by seven nations. And when we look at Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 1, he said, When the Lord your God bring you into land, you are entering to possess and drive out before you many nations. And he tells us the nations that were occupying the land. He said there were the Hit Hivites, the Gurgesites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Seven nations larger and stronger than you. Hear what it is this morning. I want you to see in context this morning. God says, I'm going to take you out of bondage. And I'm going to take you in a land that is flowing with milk and honey. But now that you're coming to the land, I mean, you're seeing giants. You're seeing nations occupying the land. And not only there were nations occupying the land, the Bible tells us that there were seven nations that were stronger and larger. So it's not to understand that there's people occupying the land, but here's the problem. They are stronger and they are larger. What do you do this morning when God gave you a promise this morning? And it seems that the problems you're encountering in your life, the circumstances that you're encountering is stronger and larger. The Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 22. Take notes of these so you can spend some time reading it this morning. The Lord your God will drive out those nations before you and hear how he's going to do it, little by little. Write that statement down somewhere this morning, little by little. You will not be allowed to eliminate them all at once or the wild animals will multiply around you. God has a reason this morning that he's saying he's going to drive them out. Who is going to drive them out? God is going to drive them out. How is he going to do it this morning? Little by little. And this is a statement I want you to hold on to this morning. Little by little. The book of Hebrews chapter 10. And for the last scripture that I'm going to use. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36. It says you need to persevere. So that when you have done the will of God. You will receive what he has promised. So in order to receive the promise of God, we have to persevere. Tell your neighbor, you got to persevere this morning. You got to persevere. So let's get into it this morning. I want to talk to you this morning from these statements that I've made. And these passages of scripture that I has quote. I want to talk to you about the promise of God. I want to talk to you about the other side of the promise. We know about a man, a character by the name of Jacob. And we have seen, we have read about his life. And he, have, he was running from his brother who was set out to kill him because he saw his brother, Amen. A bowl, a lentil for the birthright. Now Jacob has the birthright and he's running for his life because his brother's out to get them. He has a promise upon his life, but now he's running and he's now in at a place where all he has for a pillow is a big rock. And the Bible says at that night he took that piece, that rock, he put it under his head and he looked up at the sky and he rested his head. And when he come to understand some things, amen, he celebrate the place that he was in. Because I want you to know, he says, that place is called Bethel, the house of God. And I want to take you notice this morning because they're going to come a point in time that the place that we're in this morning, we have to learn how to celebrate 
in the place that we're in. Now, some of you can't enjoy yourself or enjoy your life because you don't have the money. You don't have the job, you don't have the big house as, they, as some people have. And you're miserable because why? You're looking at what people have, amen, and what you don't have and you cannot enjoy life. But I've learned this morning, amen, your joy or your life or happiness is not, not predicated upon what you have or not. Many people fail to realize they're only looking about what they don't have and don't appreciate what they do have this morning. And it's time that we start giving God thanks for what we do have. And no matter if it's little this morning, we got to celebrate and thank God this morning for what we do have this morning. Are you handy this morning? Yes, you may be living in an apartment and desire a house, but start thanking God for the apartment that you're living in. Are you hearing me, somebody, this morning? Thank God for what you have and stop focusing on what you don't have. And Jacob have learned to celebrate his life. Amen. He is thanking God for the place that he is in. If you look at the condition of this man's life, you say, why is he celebrating? I'm saying to you this morning, we got to learn to celebrate regardless of what is happening around us. Amen. You see, the joy of the Lord is not just conditional this morning. You see, because when you have joy, when you have the joy of God this morning, you can, you can rejoice even in the bad times this morning. Amen. And our people who call themselves Christian cannot rejoice when they're going through some difficult times. You see, as I said, if you squeeze a lemon, you're supposed to get lemon juice. And if you squeeze a Christian, what you're supposed to get? If you're a Christian and you get squeezed, Christ should be coming out. And when I put the squeeze on you, what is coming out this morning? And that's why when we have the joy of God this morning, regardless of what we are faced with, when the light put a squeeze on us this morning, we will not be complaining or whining or grumbling or complaining. We are going to give God thanks in everything this morning. How many know what I'm talking about? So we must celebrate the place that we're in. Be grateful that we are alive this morning. Somebody said this place. For some this morning, it took everything they had just to get a church today. And I want to thank God for you pressing your way to be here this morning. Some of you might be tired, you might be exhausted. But we have enough to get here, enough energy and strength to get to this place. And that's why you must celebrate this morning that you are alive and you're in the land of the living and you're in the presence of God this morning. I want to speak, amen, to somebody today that feels that they are outside of the promise of God. When Jacob was exhausted, he lied down and he used a rock as a pillow. And sometimes I want you to say, this is all we have, a rock. And it is hard on every side. What are you saying, Pastor? Maybe, maybe my finances are falling apart over here. Maybe this morning my job is not working, working out for me over here. Maybe it's your relationship with your wife that you wish it could be better. Maybe it's with your children. You wish that the, your, the relationship with your children is much better. Lord, all that I have is hard. And sometimes the things that we are dealing with in life is things that we do not even welcome. And sometimes we have to go to bed with something that we did not choose this morning. I want you to know a rock in a hard place. And so when Jacob lies down in that hard place, God comes to him and reveals to him the plan that he has for him. I want you to know this morning, you may say that what you're going to, God will never speak to you. You see, God have a way, no matter what you are experiencing in life, just like Jacob. He came to Jacob, amen, in a difficult time, amen, and he revealed a plan to Jacob's life. What I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, no matter what you are facing in life, God can visit you this morning. Your circumstances might seem awful. It might seem like you're down in the, in the pit of the barrel. But I want you to know that's a good enough place that God can visit you and speak for this plan for your life this morning. Can I get a hallelujah this morning? And so it was like Jacob. God came to him. And the promise that he has spoken over Jacob's life. 
And so just as God is reminding you of some of the things at this moment, some of you, God has spoken to your life and He has given you a promise, but it seems like your promise is not coming to pass. Reminding you of some things that has been forgotten. Then Jacob declares, how awesome is this place. I want you to know there's no better time when you're going through a difficult time. It's like when, you, when you're so thirsty and you're glad for a drink of water. In a hot sunny day, I mean, you know, a, a, a glass of cold water does refresh you in the, in, the, in, the, in the worst of situation when it's so hot. And God is saying to us, Jacob is declaring that whatever he was going through, this is an awesome place because why? He was going through and he had a terrible time, but God came and spoke to him this morning. And I want you to know, sometimes we feel, we feel like outcasts. We feel like nobody. Amen. But I want you to know, God has a way of coming to us when we feel like that and speak into our lives and give us hope for living this morning. How many can say amen this morning? Amen. Jacob declared, how awesome is this place? And he says, surely this is a house of God. He is now in this place. Don't wait for everything to get fine before you tr start trusting God. Start trusting God in every situation this morning. I'm here to make a statement this morning. God is in you and God is in this place. I hear me. God is in you and God is in this place. So I'm not just talking about being here in Kingdom Life Ministry. I'm talking when God is in you. No matter what difficult time or situation that you're in, God is in that place also. Are you hearing me this morning? You see, because if you're sick this morning and you're going through a, a time of sickness, how many of God is with you this morning and God is in that place this morning? Are you hearing me? Whatever the situation, God is with you and He's in that place this morning. And if you're in a hard place right now in your life, I want to say a prayer for you. When you're tired and weary and in, in a tough situation, where it's hard on every side, even in the midst of that hard place, we are sons and daughters of God. Amen. Are you hear what I'm saying this morning? The Holy Spirit reminds us of the promise that was made to us. He reminds of the thing that was spoken in previous generation. And now when we are going through a difficult time, He arrests our soul with the potential of that moment. God, we love you, and you are surely in this place. What am I saying this morning? Why can I rejoice? I can rejoice not in the fact that everything is going fine. I am rejoicing that God is with me even through my worst situation. We celebrate with you. And we put our hands together for all of you who have pressed your way to be here this morning. That's what we said because you're in a place where God can minister to your life. And He can help you too this morning. I want you to know we celebrate how far that every one of you have come. You may struggle, you may be going through some struggle, but you're still here this morning. You're still alive and in the land of the living. And we celebrate you for coming in thus far as well. Because we know that there is, a, there, is, there is potential in your life this morning. And God has a great future for you this morning. If you believe that this morning, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory. Glory, glory. I look at individuals and yes, I see many people struggling. But I thank God that you could still make it. Look how tall you have gotten while maintaining your dignity and integrity. Amen. God honors that this morning. So as we talk about the promises of God this morning, when we read the passage of Scripture in 1 Chronicles this morning, we have two promises or two promises being fulfilled in the same text. One is obvious this morning because David would become king as declared by the prophet Samuel. And this promise took over 20 years to be fulfilled. And the second promise is happening for the nation of Israel to reach a promised land. So one promise is that David is going to be king. And the other promise is that the nation of Israel is going to reach the promised land. Follow me this morning. This promise took over for David was 20 years. 
But for the Israel, for the Israelite to end up in the promised land took over 480 years. I want to say to you this one, God is, for, is faithful to fulfill his promises. Amen. Let me say it again. God is faithful to fulfill all his promises. Sometimes it will take 20 years. And sometimes it will take 20 generations. Are you following me this morning? And it is wonderful how God will weave all the threads this morning of our lives together to make one beautiful tapestry of our life this morning. For you, there's a promise that God has put in motion. And there is something that God has deposited in your spirit. And God is going to work and weave the thread. Because why? He's crafting a beautiful tapestry out of your life. Don't complain about the hardships and difficulties. But every hardship is an opportunity that God will use to make your life better. To cause you to make progression this morning. Are you following me this morning, church? So in your row, in your section, the people sitting in, in, your, in, in, the, in the chair next to you or behind you, every person is significant this morning. And God has a plan for their life. And for those who are watching by the internet, you're not watching by accident. If you're here for the first time, it's not by accident. God is weaving the thread and he's, he's creating a beautiful tapestry. And part of it is that you will come to understand certain things concerning the promises of God. That when you live your life or when you leave here, you know as a person, God has promised me some stuff. And yet he's saying regardless of what I go through in my life, his promises are sure to come to pass. It may take a while, but I want you to know he says it's going to come to pass. How many believe that this morning? You see, because life is not meant to live in isolation. And because God is doing everything by community. And even in this gathering this morning, this is a unique gathering that God has orchestrated that the church come together. And he's doing something as a body of Christ come together. Something that we may not be able to see with our physical eyes. But as we spend time together in his presence, God is doing everything by communities this morning. This is why we need each other. Tell him person, you, we, I need you. We need each other this morning. Somebody need your faith today. Somebody need to hear the promises of God today that comes from your life. So what I'm saying this morning, your life is not by accident this morning. And whatever you are experiencing or have been through in your life is not just for you. God allow you to go through that this morning so that when you come out of it, you can tell somebody about the faithfulness and the goodness of God. Are you hearing me, somebody? So God operates in community. That's why, amen, God has a plan for your life. Just as he had a plan for my life to take me, amen, from my country and bring me here so that I can speak to you. I never know that I have met you, but God is working in community this morning. You have something to offer. You have something to give this morning. You are a bundle of potentiality. Don't forget it this morning. God can use you to make a difference. We need each other this morning. Are you hear me somebody? You are important to God and you are important to me. That's why God has bring us in community. All of these things are in motion. All of these things are on the other side of the promise. Say this word. Say this word with me. Promise. 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 We have many people make promises and break their promises. But how many know when God makes a promise, He doesn't break His promise? Yeah. How many thankful that there's a, there's a God who doesn't break His promise? Some of you have been hurt and lied because people have made promises to you and never kept to their part. But I'm grateful that we serve a God who when he makes a promise, he keeps the promise this morning. So when we talk about the word promise or we speak about promises, many images come to mind when we hear this word promise. But for the Israelite that we are speaking about, this word is taken differently this morning. You see, in Exodus, in Exodus chapter 3, 
God put things in motion for the people of Israel while they were um, in bondage in Egypt. Do you know why they were in bondage and they were crying out? God was putting something in motion to deliver them. While they were in bondage, God was speaking to Moses. Are you hearing me this morning? God was preparing a man while they were in Egypt. Amen. The children of Israel was in Egypt in bondage. God was speaking to a man. Amen. And talking about him. Amen. Tell him to go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. I want you to know this morning why am I saying that? It's because while you're here this morning, God is orchestrating things to work on your behalf. So this morning, don't think about anything else this morning. Just give God praise this morning. But while you're here, God is working it out for you this morning. You see that job that you're waiting for and you're looking for? I want you to know while you're here, praise God. God is orchestrating and putting things in place this morning for you to get a job this morning. Are you hearing me, somebody? He's working it out this morning. In Hebrew, in Exodus 3 and 17, God said that he's going to take the Hebrew people out of slavery and bring them into the promised land that is rich with milk and honey. This is the promise of God that he made to them. You see, I did not give my life to the Lord until probably I was like 11, 12 years of age. And I didn't understand the term at that time, milk and honey. And I had no idea what all these Christian lingo or Christians was talking about. About the land full of milk and honey. Because I didn't have the understanding at that particular time. Where I thought, man, if I could just get to the other side, well, there will be milk and honey for me. I didn't understand the Christian lingo. For example, I would ask a Christian, how are they doing? How are you today? And that person will respond, I am blessed and highly favored. The perception that I had from all of this Christian lingo this morning was that things are not good here. And they will get better on the other side. You see, how many of you want to go to heaven? We all want to go to heaven. But when we're sick, we pray to get healed. When something happens, we go to the doctor. But if you want to go to heaven, why not die and just go? You see, because it, within us, we want to live this morning. Amen. But I want you to get this mindset off this morning to think that the earth is a bad place. Because when God created the heavens and the earth, He says everything that He made was good. Are you hearing me? So get this mindset off that I got to get on the other side for things to get better. I got to get in heaven for things to get better. I want you to know your perception must be that I'm a child of God and wherever I am and I've God on my side, it's going to be better this morning. We have this notion that I have to get to the other side. Well, I'm, I'm not ready to go to the other side. Because I have one more daughter, she got to get married. I have two grandsons, amen, that growing up, I want to see them get married. I ain't ready to go to the other side, are you hearing me? Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? I want to enjoy my life on the earth this morning. And I want God to use me, amen, so that I can minister to life, so they can come to Christ Jesus this morning. Are you hearing me, somebody? So we have this notion about the other side. We have to get this perception right this morning. See, I took this to mean the life is going to be, to, suck, to be sucked in until I get to the other side. Really? Is that what we sign up for? What about all this milk and honey that the Bible talk about? Am I supposed to drink this? And am I... To wait to get to the other side before I experience the blessings of the Lord. Are we to reject? We are, as a people, we have to reject this immature Christian thinking Amen. that we got to get to the other side in order to enjoy our Christian life. You see, I want your world to know. I want the people in the world to know those who go in the party boats and all of these things. You can have a better time than me. Because I want you to know this morning, for those people, they have to drink liquor to have a good time. But I can dance with all the liquor. I can enjoy myself. Amen. Because I know how to enjoy myself in the Lord. I don't need no liquor to enjoy myself. You see, you got to know who you are in God this morning. 
Because everything this in the world offer, you got to drink, you got to get, you got to numb the brain, amen, or to have a good time. But I want you to know this morning, I can have a good time, amen. I don't just have to pray Christian song to have a good time. I can make a joyful noise to the Lord. I can enjoy, I can put on some music and I can dance with my wife and my children this morning. Because why? I know how to have a good time in my life. I can enjoy the life that God has given to me this morning. I don't have to wait to the other side this morning. We as believers must have a smile and a joyfulness. We look at the world and we envy them. Yes, we envy them because we see how they enjoy themselves. And we as Christians, we got to be like, you know, like a pomy one. Sit up also and be looking so pious and we can enjoy ourselves. And the only time we could dance and then we come into church and they say, clap your hand. But I want you to know the devil is a liar this morning. Are you hearing me? We can enjoy ourselves in the presence of God. You don't have to wait to go to the other side. Are oh, you hear me this morning? Too many people are waiting to get to the other side. But that's immature thinking this morning. Milk and honey is this place of favor that, that God is going to bring to you. God has spoken promises over your life. He absolutely has spoken. And if there's one thing I want to stress to you today, is that God has made you promises. I said, God has made you promises this morning. As I said, the Bible is full of them, 3,000 plus. And all of them are available to us by the way of Jesus Christ. And I also believe that there's individual promises that God has made over your life. My life, our life. God has made promises. And when you think of the promises of God, I want you to see what your specific promises are today. I know what was my promise that God has made to me. What is yours? What is your? We could, we could, we could say, yes, there's 3,000 promises in the word of God for me. But what specific promise that God has made to you? I want you to be so specific. What did God promise to you as an individual? What is that specific promise that he made to you? What is your promise? Is it the promise that you can lay your head down at night and not be dominated by prior shame from your life? Is it the promise to make your child free from addiction? Has there been the promise of a child and you have been waiting for, for more than 15 years in order to have a child? What is the promise that God has made to you? I don't know what promise God has made to you. I do know that the promises of God is available to everybody. Amen. Are you following me this morning? And the longer that we live outside of this thing, we incorrectly feel that we do not belong. Regardless of the situation, the answer is always yes and amen to them that believe. Every promise of God comes in the form of yes and amen. There's no changing of that word. Every promise of God comes with a yes and amen. Are you hearing me this morning? Let me say it on this time. Get better respond. Every promise that God has spoken comes with what? A yes and amen. And now you're getting it on this side. Every promise that God has made to you come with what? A yes and amen. God don't lie. I want you to see that this morning. He don't lie. And if he promised you, it's going to come to pass this morning. What is the promise that God has made over your life? Is it joy? Is it peace? Is it never to leave you, not to forsake you? For me this morning, the promise that God has placed upon my life was forgiveness. Forgiveness. I will share this when we come into a close. Forgiveness. What is yours this morning? What is yours? What's your specific problem? Mine was forgiveness. Because I had hated my dad growing up. Not hated him that he said I don't love him, but because of the thing that he was doing. And my specific promise from God was forgiveness. What, what, what is your promise this morning? Please get that 
an attitude about yourself that you will receive this promise that whatever it is that God will give it to you. You need to settle. You don't need, we all don't need to settle for second rate or second class Christianity. We don't need to settle for that. Some have given up on, upon, upon their promise because the world has told you that it will never happen. You'll never get married. You'll never have a child. You'll never do this. You'll never do that. And you're starting to believe what the devil or what the world is saying. And I'm here to speak over your life today to tell you that the promise of God is going to come to pass. Now you hear me? I said it's going to come to pass. If he said it, it's going to come to pass. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's not a man that he should lie. He's going to do it. And that's why we got to keep believing God. You will see the goodness in your life and they will come in the form of yes and amen. You are first choice. You are not leftovers. Do you hear what I say? That's why I tell you every day, every time you come into the church, that you are design original. You're not a carbon copy. Do not settle to be a carbon copy because you are not. You are designer original this morning. You are his first option because you are the bride of Christ this morning. If I teach you a very shallow amen, version of Christianity, it will be all about the milk and honey. Where everything gets better, but this is not reality. Do you hear what I said? If I only teach you about milk and honey, that's a shallow version of Christianity. Because when we talk about, amen, the milk and honey, too many churches and pastors are only telling people about the blessings. Everybody wants the blessing, but nobody wants to go through the process or go through the difficulties or the hatches of life. They just want the blessings. And that's not the reality of life to just have the milk and honey. I remember this morning when my wife and I, in fact, Thursday, 4th of July, we celebrated our 27th wedding anniversary. 27 years. We got married. Wow, when we got married, that was the milk and honey. The day we got married, that was milk and honey. And then we realized later in our marriage, huh? Where is all the milk and honey? Because when they get married and they come to find out, I did not know that marriage came with some difficulties. So the beginning was milk and honey. And after the process this morning, you realize there is things that needs to fix. There's things that need to put in place. There's need things to make adjustment with your life. I do not know that promise comes with problem. Promise, promises comes with problem. Promises comes with problem. Write that down somebody. Promises comes with problem. Many people have walked away from promises because we were expecting only milk and honey. And we get something that looked very different. So promises comes with the promises of God is yea and amen. But promises comes with problem. So we say the first word, promises, or promises. Let's say the second word, possess. Come say it with me together. Possess. So God has made the promise, but he wants us to possess it. We have the promise that is yes and amen to them that believe. But there's a the, the Bible tells us, and God is saying, I give you the promise, but now you got to possess it. So when we read Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1, the Bible tells us, When the Lord God shall bring you into the land, 
where thou goest to possess it, and had cast out many nations before thee. And he said, the Hittite, the Gergesite, the Amorites, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hevites, the Jebusite, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And here the second verse says, and when the Lord God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. Thou shalt even show no mercy unto them. So yes, the promises are yes and amen. But God says, you got to possess it. Tell the neighbor, you got to possess your promise. Who is going to drive out the enemy? Somebody shouted. Who is going to drive out the enemy? God's will. God is going to drive out the enemy. But who needs to possess it? Come on, come on. I'm, if I'm getting true to you, God says he will destroy, he will remove the enemy. But you and I got to possess the promise this morning. Here we read about seven nations that are larger and they are stronger than you. And now there is a problem with the promise. How many people, God has given you a promise, but you're experiencing problems. Amen. We all thought that the promised land was only about milk and honey. What is with all of this this morning? We see that there are seven nations. The Bible said they are larger and they are stronger. So what is this business about larger and stronger? God says, I'm making you a promise to take you into the promised land. And yes, indeed, this morning, it does flow with milk and honey, and you're going to love it this morning. But however, there's a problem with the property because there's somebody that is already there. God is going to give you something. He said it's yours, but somebody is occupying it. Every new opportunity is come with your new opponent. Every new opportunity comes with your new opponent. What am I saying? Your promise comes with problems. Because when we all get smacked in the head with a struggle and face something larger and stronger. God, I thought you said the promises are here, amen, but how come I'm experiencing problems? That's why God is saying, yes, there is milk and honey, but there is also larger and stronger. I want you to show the equation. Milk and honey, larger and stronger. Promises of God, milk and honey, larger and stronger this morning. God said we got to possess. Are you following me this morning? Somebody say possess. And that's why we are finding that many are walking away from the problem, from the promise because we are not willing to deal with the problem. And if we do not understand the struggles, we will walk away from the promise. And how many people are walking away from the promise because they cannot handle the problem? We cannot possess something that we do not understand. And what I'm saying here today, I can preach and holler at you and talk about all the promises of God. But it will be a shallow version of Christianity. If I don't tell you there's milk and honey, yes, but also there is stronger and larger. And God said, yes, there is the promise, but we got to possess the promise. Are you hearing me this morning, church? Amen. God tell the Israelites that I'm giving you this promised land. And it is flowing with milk and honey. However, there are seven nations that are larger and stronger than you. And the next nation that you have to conquer is bigger than the last one. So every time you conquer a problem, then you're going to face a bigger one. How many of you ever have to face problems one after the other? And it seems like again getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the Bible telling us, Seven nations and every one that they had to face, amen, tend to get bigger and bigger and stronger. That's, that's the situation here today. The next nation you have to conquer is bigger than the last one. The problem you're facing today is bigger than the last one. 
When we get too exhausted looking on what we can never be. I can never be that. The enemy always tell you something. You, 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 you fight a battle. You fight a big, amen, battle. You get your breakthrough and it seems like a bigger one you occur. We praise him on Sunday. We, we enjoy our spiritual walk. And the closer you get to the difficulty, you realize how big it is. The closer that you get to it, you realize it is bigger than the one that you have fought before. Sometimes we do not get to possess the promise. It's because we get intimidated by the inhib inhabitants of the land. Some of your problems is intimidating you. It's making you fold up and want to give up. How many people have walked away from their promise because they find that the problem is too big, it's too hot to handle? Am I talking to somebody here today? Amen. God says this land is yours and I promise it to you. Tell the neighbor the promise is yours this morning. There's a problem with it. They are bigger and they are stronger with you. Moses dispatched 12 spies to scout out the promised land after escaping from slavery in Egypt. And only two of the twelve that could in, said we could inhabit the land. God says this this morning. Stop telling yourself what you cannot do. When God says I've already provided for you. Amen. Are you hearing me this morning? God says I have provided for you. It is God's job to drive them out. It is God's job to fight your battles for you. I, I want to tell somebody here today. It is God's job, amen, to fight your battle this morning. It is bigger than me. It is not my battle to fight. It is the Lord's to fight this morning. And if you're facing big problems, if it's bigger than you, then God says, I will fight your battles for you this morning. You don't have to worry about fighting. God says, I'm going to drive them out this morning. I'm going to drive them out. This is our land and we are going to possess it this morning. And we need to be taught how to size up our opponent. How many know how to size up your opponent this morning? We need to size up our opponent because every level is a new, a new opponent this morning. And this opponent at this level can only be de developed in us at this level. In other words, if I were to do a little boxing episode, you size up your opponent. It's not a matter, amen, that he may be you bigger than he might be bigger than you. But God says you've got to size up your opponent. The reason why you size up your opponent is to see how big he is. That's what God is saying. He's not telling you to fight. He is telling you to size up your opponent. So that you could see how big your opponent is. Because how many know, amen, how big the devil is. How many know you understand how big the blessing are? Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? No, you didn't get that this morning. God said you've got to size up your, amen, your opponent. Because God wants you to see that this enemy, no matter how big he is, you've got to recognize there's something bigger. A blessing is coming for you this morning. That's how... Exactly it is to size up one opponent. So that's why it is not our job to fight something bigger than us. It is our job to size them up. Because the size of my opponent show me the size of my promise. When God revealed that to me, I was shouting with joy. Because there's some big opponent. Think of it this way. If the problem is the size of the sun, then I cannot wait to see the size of the promise. Have you walked away from the promise because you have been intimidated by the inhabitants? We understand for those young people who play video games, we understand that these video games every level gives you a new opponent and all those who play video games can tell you that's true every level takes you to a new opponent a big opponent 
a more wiser, a more skillful opponent. There's a great video game out, and for a long time it was is it in it called the Mike Tyson Punch Out. The first level class, it was Class Joe. He had a record of one win and 99 losses. So you could imagine if you were in you were playing on this level, you could surely beat him. Because you understand his track record? One win and 99 losses. That's the first level. But then there's other levels. So when you start going to the other levels, you have people like Ball Bull. And you have people like Piston Hunter. In this game, there's 14 other levels until you get to Mike Tyson. Because the point of the game is that everybody wants to reach to fight Mike. But in order to get to Mike, you have to go through the 14 levels. But if you play in the game, you understand that every lesson, amen, comes with an aspect of you learning particular skills. So level one, you learn certain skills. But you cannot take level one skill and go and fight Mike Tyson at level 14. I want you to, don't miss this this morning. So in this game, there's something called a cheat code. So you're punching 00737-35963. And when you're punching this cheat code, it takes you straight to level 14 so that you can fight Mike Tyson. But the problem with that is that when you use your cheat code to reach level 14, you do not possess the skills that is necessary to fight Mike Tyson. Are you understand what I'm saying this morning? So when God is taking you to the first level and there's a big opponent before you, amen, size them up this morning. And what God will instruct you and put skills within you, you are matched for that level. Now he's ready to take you to the next level. And when you reach to the next level, he trains you again. So you, now you're qualified for round two. He takes you into level three. Are you here? So the time that you reach, amen, level 14, amen, you are skilled, amen, this morning. You are a warrior this morning, amen. You are no weakly. You are champion of champion this morning. That's why we cannot want, many people want a cheat code. We want a cheat code. We want to go straight to, to level 14. But I want you to know there are no cheat code in the promises of God. You cannot bypass levels. You have to walk through each one of them this morning. And that's why the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 22. It says, it is not your job to fight it, but it is your job to possess it. God will drive them out before you little by little. In other words, levels by level, God will use you to drive them out this morning. We are not allowed to eliminate them all at once. So how do we possess the promise that God has spoken to us? Little by little. God promised an important lesson here. If God allow us to eliminate them all at once, we do not de develop the gifts that can only be developed through one opponent. Did I make myself clear? So every opponent, God, amen, train you. God fortify you. Each opponent, there's no cheat code. And that's why we got to possess it. In other words, we got to go from level to level. So what you're experiencing now, you asking God to take you out of it. Don't pray God take you out. Say, God, give me the strength to go through it. Because when you go through it, amen, you will come out more refined, more wise, more, you're more equipped and able to handle your situation this morning. Now, would you put your hands together this morning for the Lord? God says, if you bypass the opponent, you are going to bypass the gift that God has for you on every level. So that's why I thank God for you who are fighting the good fight of faith. Who are not giving up this morning. You may want to quit because you see like children who are going to school. 
For those who are past and moving on to middle, grade, mi middle school, the work is not going to be the same. And so we got to encourage our kids who have moved on to middle school. And for those who have moved on from middle school to high school, and those from high school to college, you got to tell them the work is not going to be the same what, when they were in primary in status. Even the work is going to get harder. Are you hearing me? But in the same way, the preparation of the work from, from kindergarten to primary school, to middle school, to high school, is before you for amen for higher education this morning it's all we can process this morning how many are hearing me this morning we cannot bypass it this morning and likewise our christian life and our in our victory in god we have to go through the process tell your neighbor you got to go through the process this morning we got to go through the process i may not be able to finish this morning but i i, I want to close with these these few points this morning and so god is saying to us this morning where we think that when we get to the other side, we'll start, amen, in the promise. You don't have to wait to get to the other side to enjoy the promises of God. The very fact that we start the challenge, like, like the Mike Tyson punch-out game, we are facing an opponent, and we go from promise to glory, from glory to strength, and from strength to strength. That's what God is saying for you and I this morning. This is what it means to be growing in the promises of God. We do not get to grow into the promise. We grow in it, not just standing in it this morning. How I many know we are growing in the promise this morning? Amen. In other words, how we grow, both milk and honey, larger and stronger. I'm in it, but God, I'm asking you that give me the strength and give me what it takes so that I will grow in the promises of God this morning. Amen. Are you with somebody? And every opponent builds a dependence to the Lord. And the greatest gift that God can give you is dependence this morning. And that brings me to the last point. Persevere. Tell the neighbor, persevere. We need to be reminded of our responsibility on this side of the promise is to persevere. How do we persevere this morning? We got to keep moving towards the possession of the promise. Let me challenge you this morning. Some of us get knocked down, and it's hard to get up. But if you get knocked down, just, and you cannot get up, just keep rolling forward. You understand what I'm saying? You can't get up, but you can roll. But make sure you're rolling in the position of going forward. Are right, you hearing me this morning? Sometimes we take a good hit, and we can't get up. And we're beating ourselves up, but we can't get up. Yes. So God is saying, if you can't get up, just keep on rolling forward. Hallelujah. At least you're going in the direction of your promise this morning. So how do we persevere? Little by little. Perseverance is one of the greatest gifts. And when we start interpreting the promises based upon the scenery without moving towards the possession, we get stuck. But I'm here to tell you this morning, possession is not a passive experience. It is an active participation. Do you hear that this, this morning? They told David that he will not be able to come into the city. The last enemy was a Jebusite. And the Bible says that the Jebusite occupy the middle of the city which is the strongest area what God is saying God wants to take our heart the area that the enemy has occupying and if he could get control of our heart this morning we can win the battle Amen. the enemy tell David or well, God's word says that the, the last enemy is going to be stronger and that enemy has a location the Bible says the Jebusite is in the middle and God is saying today, if you open up your heart and allow God to take control, how many of you will have the victory this morning? I'm here to tell you, persevere. You may feel that everybody has been rejected you, but I'm here to tell you this morning. God tells us that we are able to possess our promise. But the promise that I can possess, I must persevere towards it. And David is now king. And I want you to know, he persevered. He did not give up. 
And as a result of that, he didn't give up. You would see, and I don't have time to go into it, you would see that David conquered the enemy and he built a place and fortified and it was called the city of David. He took control of the stronghold that the enemy has. Why? It's because he persevered. My friends today, the promise is to you and I. We got to possess it. But in possessing, we got to persevere. Three things. The promise is sure. You got to possess your promise. But in possess possessing your promise, you got to persevere. Don't give up. Tell me, but don't give up this morning. Will you stand to your feet this morning? Promise, possession, and perseverance. Promise, possession, and perseverance. Can you say it with me? Promise, possession, perseverance. The promise is for you. Possess the promise. Persevere. No matter what comes your way, hold on. I love what God is saying to you and I today. I feel that many people today, I feel they cheated from their life where they should be in their life. And maybe you have been, you become disenchanted with your life. But I'm here to remind you that God is true to his word. And he has given you a promise just as he given me a promise. See, when I talk about what was my promise, my promise was forgiveness. As I told you, I had, I love my father. He passed away many years ago. But I told you I had hatred for him because there was a generational curse that has passed on in the form of alcohol. And they didn't like what was becoming of him and what he did to his family. And I hated him. But when I come to know Jesus Christ, and I, sat, I used to pray that my father would die. But when I sat knowing what the word of God says, God promised me forgiveness. And he says, if I forgive, I will get the breakthrough. And I want you to know a couple of years before my father died, I was able to make it right with him. And there was forgiveness. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Are you hearing me this morning? I want you to know God promised me forgiveness. And I want you to know in that situation, my father, it was healed. That I love my father. I prayed for him. He accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. God promised me forgiveness. And it came this morning. What is your promise this morning? And so I feel that many of you feel disenchanted with your life of how it's going. But I'm here to tell you the promise of God is here and amen to them, I believe. I want the worship team to lead us. I'm going to ask you this morning. You want us to pray with you this morning? I want you to form a line. I know time has gone. But if you're here and you want God to touch your life, I want you to step out your seat. I'm willing to pray for you this morning. Because God said to tell you this morning that his promise for your life is ye and amen. Would you do that this morning? I'm here this morning. If you want you prayer this morning.
Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, that song. the chorus.